Good afternoon, everyone. I am so excited to be here to be presenting Wu-Tang is for the Children, how state laws intended to protect children uh, raise unintended risk and consequences. My name is Anthony Hendricks. I'm a cybersecurity and data privacy attorney based in Oklahoma City. While I am a lawyer, I am not your lawyer, and this presentation should not be considered legal advice. Instead, think of this as a, con uh, a conversation between friends. But if you need legal advice, please, please, please find a local lawyer that can help you. I also host a cybersecurity podcast that focuses on exposing underrepresented groups to the field of cybersecurity and data privacy. Uh, you can scan the QR code and it'll take you to the podcast, or you can find the podcast anywhere where great podcasts are found. So let's go back to 1998. So on February 25th, 1998, Hip-hop group Wu-Tang Clan made Grammy history for all the wrong reasons. After the Wu-Tang Clan lost Best Rap Album of the Year category, Wu-Tang Clan member ODB jumped on stage and said the in infamous phrase, Wu-Tang is for the children. Now, if you're not familiar with the Wu-Tang Clan and the Wu-Tang Clan's lyrics, I just pulled a quick sampling uh, that I want to share with the group, if that's okay. Watch your step, kid, and protect your neck. Cash rules everything around me. Cream, get your money. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. If you want beef, then bring the ruckus. Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to, well, you get the point. So Wu-Tang Clan is not for the children. Despite what ODB says, um, their lyrics really aren't things you should be playing for kids. And it appears that states are taking the same kind of Wu-Tang Clan approach when it comes to state privacy. While they have all of these kind of laws that are focused on protecting children, when you start paying attention to what these laws are doing, you realize that they're raising a lot of privacy risk and they're not doing what they say they're going to be doing, which is protecting children. So what exactly are we gonna chat about today? So we're gonna first start talking about children's privacy and safety laws. We'll then talk about how states are taking the lead. We'll then look at some unintended consequences. And then finally, we'll talk about some of my favorite Wu-Tang Clan songs and talk about ways that we can grow together. Does that sound good? All right, let's go. So children, privacy, and safety. So we're going to stay in 1998. And we're going to talk about Congress passing COPA, which is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Uh, and this law protects children under the age of 18, requiring certain disclosures. So what led up to the creation of this federal law? So as people started getting on the internet, people had so many concerns about how we are going to protect our children. And so the Children's Advertising Review Unit, which is an industry group, drafted some guidelines on what they thought the industry should be doing to protect children. And so when you think about COPA, COPA was a remix. What they did is they took that industry kind of guidelines and they turned it into legislation. So in 2013, COPA's rules were updated to kind of broaden the definition of children. And in 2017, the rules were updated again so that it applied to IoT devices, the internet of things. So problem solved, why exactly are we here? Uh, why am I taking up some of your time today? Well, um, COPA hasn't really been updated much besides um, 2013 and 2017. And our current laws weren't created to address how we actually use the internet right now, right? And so other countries have passed laws that focused on children and our laws look just simply out of date. One of the issues with our current laws is what exactly is a child, right? If I just asked a person on the street what a child was, they'd quickly tell me someone under the age of 18. But in COPA, they define a child as a person uh, under the age of 13. So the law doesn't even look after teenagers. And, and so that leads to some issues with gaps in the law because we're not protecting our teenagers who are often more vulnerable because they are online all the time. Also, there's been a lot of talk about protecting our children, but not much action. For three years in a row, President Biden in his State of the Union starts to talk about children's privacy. And he talks about how we need to strengthen privacy protection, how we need to stop big tech from collecting personal data on kids and teenagers online. Uh, and, and he always has those phrases, um, but nothing has really come from it. Uh, and there's been a number of laws that people have been debating, including the kids online safety uh, the Teens Online Privacy Act 
and COPA 2.0. So there's been a lot of conversations about protecting our children. So I was done with my slides and then uh, the Senate wanted to start doing stuff. And, and so the Senate began debating COSA and COPA and uh, they passed both of those laws. Right, they pass it by wide margins, 91 to three. So it got a lot of bipartisan support. So let's talk about those laws. So COSA would require social media companies to protect users under age 17. So it kind of expands that definition to include more and more people. It will require companies to provide guardians with more controls over minors use on those platforms. Uh, COPA 2.0 would also create stronger online privacy protections for our teenagers. So good job, problem solved. Why exactly are we still here? Well, it still has to be passed by the house and the house is on vacation and not the types of vacations that we take. I'm talking about a six week vacation. And so we're not really gonna have anything done by the house uh, in a couple of months. And so we're still facing these issues. So let's start talking about how states are taking the lead. When the federal government fails to act, our states start acting. So if you're gonna have any conversation about states and privacy, you have to start with California because they're often the leader when it comes to privacy. In 2022, California passed the Age Appropriate Design Code. And that law required digital platforms to kind of determine whether their product was targeting towards children and to assess the type of risk of harm when it comes to children. And other states have gotten into the mix. Last year, 35 states, along with Puerto Rico, started debating uh, proposed laws. Uh, and this year, it still continues. 12 state legislatures have pending legislation where they're talking about this. And these proposed laws range from bans on social media for children uh, to restrictions uh, to not allowing companies to have targeted ads towards children. So what exactly do these laws look at? look like. So I, I throw them in a couple of different buckets so that we can talk about them just all together. So there are some that include just social media bans. So Montana says, hey, we're going to ban TikTok. No TikTok for anyone. Uh, Utah and Arkansas ban minors from using social media altogether. If you're under a certain age, you can't get online. Uh, then there are other states that have just age restrictions. And so Arkansas has an age restriction law, Louisiana and Utah, where you're under the age of 13, uh, you're not able to use these social media companies. Another category is restrictions on features, where they say, hey, certain features are not allowed to be used if the user is a child. And so usually it's related to targeted ads. And then there are bans on collecting minors information where you can't collect certain information about kids. So problem solved, right? We're, we're, we're done. Well, these state laws are talking about children's privacy and online safety. So we should be good to go, right? Uh, not exactly. And then the lawsuits happened. Lots and lots of lawsuits. Uh, so federal courts have granted preliminary injunctions that blocked laws in Arkansas, California, and Texas. Uh, and so there are a lot of lawsuits that are saying, hey, these laws that are intended for children uh, really raise unintended consequences. They create a lot of problems. So let's talk about those consequences. Let's talk about those problems with these laws. If you are going to create a law that protects children, you got to know who's a child, right? You got to know who's a child and who's an adult. And while the goal is more protection for children, it comes with two big costs. It comes with a cost related to our privacy and a cost related to our First Amendment rights. So these laws require companies to provide additional protections for minors. And so you need to find out who exactly is a kid. And you do this by requiring age verifications, right? And so we probably all kind of seen these things where it's online, please verify that you're over the age of 18. Um, but these state laws are asking for more. They're usually asking for third party verifications or even some weird stuff like uh, age estimations. And so that's, that's really weird and we'll talk about that for a moment. So third party verifications, this is when a third party is used to verify someone's age. So this can be something like, hey, take a picture of your ID so that we can show that you are over the age of 18. Or hey, use your credit card, put your credit card information in and we'll know that you are over the age of 18 because you have a credit card. Uh, other sites require users to sign up for 
uh, other third party software where you put in your information for them, you get an account, and then they say, hey, just give us the information from your account and we can verify how old you are. Another way, in, which is a little bit weirder, companies attempt to guess a user's age. And so this can be done by turning on your camera and having facial recognition guess if you are over the age of 18. That sounds a little creepy, doesn't it? Uh, others have suggested that a user's age can be guessed based on their online activities. So they'll kind of look at what websites you're going to to determine if you are an adult. So what's the problem? What is the exact problem with this? Well, it's too much information and too little information. So people have to give even more information to companies. You have to give them your ID, your credit card. You have to give them access to your online activities. Does anybody feel comfortable with giving more and more information to companies? But also, there are some people who don't have that information. If you don't have a credit card, it means that you can't get on social media. You know, if you don't have an ID, it means that, well, you can't get on to any of these websites. And so there's a problem with too much information and too little information. And then accuracy with this biometrics. Can these systems accurately identify a person's age, right? Um, even though we've had advancements in these systems, this software still has trouble with distinguishing faces of women and people of color. And, and, and so I like to call this the black doesn't crack problem, right? The software is going to be looking at you and they're not going to be able to identify your age, largely because it was trained using white men as the model. But there's also questions about the ability for companies to protect your biometric information. You're giving them more and more information about you. And so we've seen so many of these headlines about all of these lawsuits and these lawsuit settlements related to biometric information. Last month, Meta agreed to pay $1.4 billion to settle a biometric lawsuit with the state of Texas. Instagram reached a settlement in Illinois for $68.5 million. TikTok reached a $92 million settlement for a biometric case. And so do we trust these companies with having more and more of our information, especially our biometric information? It also raises First Amendment problems. And First Amendment laws, some of these laws are creating First Amendment concerns from everyone. And you may be wondering, why is this a First Amendment issue, right? So let's take a moment and talk about constitutional law for non-attorneys. Just one slide and you will walk away knowing more constitutional law than most people in this country. All right, so the First Amendment protects my speech, right? It protects your speech. But the First Amendment also applies to children. It protects our children's speeches. Another area is that it protects company speeches. A lot of people don't understand that, uh, but the First Amendment applies to companies. And also, we need to remember that freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequences. So you could be online saying crazy things and you will still face consequences. It is a freedom of speech from the government creating laws about that, but not freedom of consequences. But also, the First Amendment creates the protects the creation and the dissemination of information because that's considered speech. So now you are our constitutional scholars. All right, so let's talk about the First Amendment again. Kids and parents have a First Amendment right, right? These laws restrict children's access to social media sites and children, even ones under the age of 13, have a constitutional right to speech. Also, their parents have a right to make decisions about what type of speech their children are being able to give. And a lot of these laws say, hey, even if your parents are fine with you getting on these social media sites, we don't want you because you're under the age of 13. And you can't do that because you're infringing on the children and the parents' First Amendment rights. It also has an impact on company rights. As we talked about, companies have a First Amendment right. Uh, these laws also prohibit and restrict the collection, sale, and sharing of children's data. And so when courts looked at this issue, the courts have repeatedly said, hey, if you're going to create these laws that restrict the rights of companies uh, to collect this information, 
then there must be a very important compelling government interest. And it has to be narrowly tailored. Like you need to have the least restrictive laws. And only then are we gonna allow you to do something that may potentially infringe on these First Amendment rights. So what about adults? While these laws are focused on children, uh, they also impact the rights of adults. These laws could have a chilling effect on your speech. If you have to show your ID or put in your credit card information before logging on to Twitter, uh, that's probably going to change what you're going to say online, right? Because everybody knows exactly who you are. Um, and, and so it has an impact on what people may say. Another common element in all of these state laws is content moderation. Uh, the focus is keeping harmful information away from children. However, this encourages companies to censor all information. It encourages them to delete posts meant for adults um, because they may not be appropriate for children. And companies' content moderation is very different from government-required restrictions. Uh, but it encourages more content moderation by companies. So now let's talk about ways that we can address these issues. Uh, maybe not through the use of state laws, but through other mechanisms by looking at some of my favorite Wu-Tang Clan songs and skits. Sounds good? All right. Could it all be so simple? One of the closing tracks of Enter the 36 Chambers, uh, where uh, the Wu-Tang Clan members talk about the simpler things in life. So it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, there are still ways that we can protect children and respect our rights. So we should think about simpler solutions. So what's the problem that we want to solve? What exactly is the problem that we want to address? And solve that problem in the least restrictive way. Next, we need to stop being sharks. One of the skits from a Wu-Tang Clan album was talking about people who are sharks. Uh, sharks are people who are biters, they're copiers. Uh, most people tried to steal the Wu-Tang Clan style uh, in the US. States are trying to steal what they're doing in Europe. And a lot of these state laws are just copycats of laws in the EU. And that's a problem because this is America and we do freedom differently. Uh, our First Amendment uh, protections are very different uh, than protections found in other countries. And so that means when you're taking a law from another country and trying to apply it here, it raises all types of issues. So instead of trying to steal or bite from other people, we need to create American-focused solutions. Uh, we shouldn't just look to see what other countries are doing. Uh, we should focus on what our rights are, what our beliefs and our traditions are to create specific US laws. Cash rules everything around me, right? We need to talk about the importance of money, the importance of involvement with industry. We can't exclude industry when we attempt to create these laws. I think it's important for us to remember that COPA was an industry standard, like we took something from the industry as guidelines and we use that as a starting point to create a law. Uh, a number of these restrictions that states are coming up with, they are expensive to implement, for not only for companies, but for the government, for the government to be able to monitor uh, uh, whether people are following these things. And so we need to focus on better industry standards and, and allowing them to be part of the process so that we can have better solutions. Next, we need to proceed with caution. The law is constantly changing, and our courts continue to look at these issues. And so what might be fine uh, a couple of months ago isn't fine now. So remember, yesterday's price is not today's price. Things that might be OK uh, when we looked in the past aren't exactly going to be fine now, because the law is constantly changing and developing in this area. And then finally, a better tomorrow. We need to focus on data minimization, right? We need to focus on ways to have the least amount of information uh, given to companies. We can protect children by placing an emphasis on funding law enforcement and groups that tackle child exploitation. We need to educate kids on how to be safer online, right? Not only just having laws that uh, place additional protections for children, we also need to tell children that they need to protect themselves. They need to watch their step and protect their neck, right? 
And then finally, we need to have comprehensive privacy protections for everyone. We need to create laws that protect all of us, not just our children, but every single American. So what did we learn today? Uh, people forget about half of all new information uh, within an hour of learning it. So it's not uncommon for someone to say, okay, you stayed an extra day at DEF CON for that last day. Uh, what exactly did you learn? I saw that there was someone talking about children's privacy. Uh, what did you learn? And it's not uncommon for you to be like, I can't recall, but he did a great job and I loved his suit, right? <laughs> and it's not your fault. Uh, because a human brain can only focus on six to nine new pieces of information uh, before there is a steep drop off. So I am going to help everyone out. Here are six takeaways so that if someone asks you, what exactly did you learn from this presentation? You will be able to remember at least one thing, right? So first, the public is right to be concerned with the privacy and safety of our children. Two. The federal government has been able to update and pass new, the federal government has not been able to update and pass new laws, so states are taking the lead. Three, state laws. We'll be all right. State, law, state laws have unintended consequences that impact our privacy and rights. Four, state children privacy laws ask us to trade our rights for potential protections, but it's not a fair trade. Laws should be narrowly focused based on U.S. standards and laws and include industry input. And then six, Wu-Tang is not for the children, uh, but their songs still slap. All right. So thank you so much. If you like the slides uh, and you want to get a copy, you can scan a QR code. It'll take you to my website, uh, and then you can download the slides. They won't be available until probably tomorrow uh, because hotel Wi-Fi is not the best. All right, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate this time uh, uh, to talk about children's privacy.